Between open world survival and exploration, stealth, combat, resource management, and a suite of online systems, there's a lot going on in Death Stranding in addition to its totally bonkers story. So we've curated a list of the most essential tips and tricks you'll need to get started right on your adventures as a post-apocalyptic delivery man. Tired of rocking the controller? You can turn off the motion controls for soothing BB. Just head over to the control settings in the options menu and switch off the motion sensor function. If you're in a hurry but low on stamina, you can skim across lakes and rivers without actually getting into the water to easily refill your canteen on the fly. Sometimes it's better to get purposely grabbed by BTs and drawn into a mini-boss fight with the catcher. Defeating it will reward you with a mountain of Kyrelium crystals and will clear the area of BTs for the immediate future. Conversely, if you're short on ammo, you can also run away from BT boss fights to clear an area. You'll have to wade through some goo, but try to stick to higher ground and you can probably get away safely. You can steal mule trucks and load them up with all the goods you've stolen, but if you leave the truck for too long, all the goods become lost and shared online. Finders keepers! Driving your trike or truck as close to a structure as possible, or leaving it on the elevator at large centers, will let you access its contents from terminals. You can also load items between two vehicles from the cargo menu if they're parked close enough together. Putting items on your tool rack, like the bola gun for instance, can reduce the space taken up in your inventory. You can press and hold triangle to quickly drop everything on Sam's back. It's a good way to save your precious cargo from getting ruined or scattered in combat. Conversely, you can also hold down triangle to pick up lots of cargo on the ground very quickly, which is helpful if you take a spill and drop all your loot. The same also applies to holding square and harvesting tons of crystals right after a boss fight. This might be a no-brainer, but don't forget to press triangle while in the cargo menu to automatically arrange everything on your back in the most weight-efficient and balanced way. You can hold multiple boots on your boot rack and multiple blood packs in your pouch without taking up extra space. When going head-to-head -head with mules, look for a throwaway container and use it to bash their faces for an instant KO, then pick up their container and use it on their friends. Help pave some roads for an easier time traveling and tons of likes. Some paved roads even go over enemy camps, letting you bypass them altogether. Be sure to drive on the center of the paved roads to maintain your vehicle battery. Where available, make sure to check garages for free vehicles before fabricating them yourself. You'll save lots of resources that way. Before heading back from an isolated prepper delivery, check their shared cargo for lost items you can easily return elsewhere for extra likes. Some of the orders for Sam are not required to progress the story and may appear in earlier cities or centers. Orders that are intended to progress the story will have gold lines floating on the text. Helping upgrade another player's structure will also give you likes if other players interact or deliver goods to it. When carrying something super heavy, you don't need to wait for the prompt to rebalance. You can see Sam start to sway and make minor adjustments to keep yourself upright. When fighting mules, don't forget to use your strand. Hold L2 to ready it, then parry when time slows by pressing R2. Then tie them up when they're staggered. Any cargo you leave on the ground will become lost after you travel more than a thousand meters from it, even things stored on vehicles. When planning your trip, be sure to store unneeded cargo in your private storage before heading out. Private lockers are not universal. If you leave a bunch of cargo in one private locker, it won't show up in another. You can use your cufflink menu to click on individual preppers or cities to see what you have stored there. Hoard Cryptobiotes. They refill blood just like blood bags, but take up less inventory, and you can carry tons of them. Timefall shelters don't just protect you from timefall, they'll also fully restore the condition of your cargo. Remember to throw the climbing anchor rope down after scaling it to make sure it can be used again later, either by you or another player. Deconstruct a ladder if it ends up leading to nowhere. You'll get the ladder back, and it'll prevent your fellow hoarders from trying to climb your stupid ladder that goes nowhere. Don't forget to log back in if you get logged out. Otherwise, you won't have access to other players' signs, structures, and likes, which makes the game much more difficult. Playing Death Stranding offline is basically hard mode. If you're getting impatient, you can skip the short cutscenes that happen between everything. There are technically four when you take a shower, and unless you're really invested, you probably don't need to see Sam load every single delivery onto a conveyor belt. Just be careful that you're not skipping follow-up scenes attached to them that might fill you in on the story. While it's somewhat risky, you actually can use a ladder as a bridge for your trike. It's sketchy, but super satisfying. Just don't try it with the truck. For more on Death Stranding, make sure to check out our full review of the game, as well as more tips on how to avoid those pesky BTs, and take a crash course on how vehicles work and crash in the game. If you have any tips of your own, drop them in the comments. And of course, for much, much more on Death Stranding, keep it right here on IGN.